So you've rented a projector and screen from the Duop shop. I'm gonna go over everything that you need to know to use it with confidence. When renting a projector, there's a few things to consider. We have a short throw and a medium throw projector. A short throw can be closer to your screen and still get a full size image. A medium throw needs to be a bit further back. The other thing to consider is how bright of a projector do you need? This is a 3500 lumen projector. It's considered a low light projector. If you're in a dim room that you have control over the lighting, this will be great. A high brightness projector would be about a 5000 lumen or a 6000 lumen projector. They're a bit more money, but it'll help you compete with the uh, ambient light. Now, none of these projectors are bright enough to compete with the sun or even outdoors in the shade during daytime. The next thing to consider is how big of a screen you're gonna need. This depends on how big the room is and who all needs to see it. I have two main sizes that we ran out at the Duop shop. We have a 100 inch diagonal and it's a 16 by nine format. The other is a 10 foot by six foot screen. Now that screen is on a set of legs where the bottom of the screen can be from two to five feet high, putting the top as high as 12 feet. Let's look at how to set up the 100 inch screen. It's on a tripod leg. First, you turn the screen itself sideways and open the feet at the bottom. Next, lower the pin and lift the handle to the top. Next, position the bottom of the screen where you want it. and raise the screen to the desired height. If you have a short throw projector, for a screen this size, you only need to be out about six feet in front of it. If you have the optional projector stand, you simply pop the legs off, screw them in, and set it up. Now that you've roughly positioned the projector, getting it to fit on the screen is the real trick. You have to physically move it forwards and backwards, left and right. It will always want to shoot directly at the screen. You never want to be off to the right or left because that will give you a really weird angle, which can't be corrected. Once you've got it directly in front of it and level, scoot the projector back until your corners match up. There's a really useful feature in the menu. If we go to menu, this is slightly different on most models, but they all have it. Here we'll look for a thing called test pattern. If we go down the test pattern and turn it on, it gives us a useful grid that we can use to make adjustments up, down, left, and right, and get it in line. One other useful feature to look at in each, according to your projector position, is are you going to project it from the front, from the rear, or will it be upside down for some reason, say hung from a ceiling? Again in the menu, on this model, we can go to here where it says projection. When we toggle there and hit over, it changes the orientation, up, down, left, right, and reverse. Now that we have our projector in position, all we need to do is get an HDMI or a VGA cable coming from our source and plug it in. All of our projectors are HDMI enabled. Now HDMI carries audio and video. There's a small speaker in each projector. It's not nearly enough to project for an audience. If we're gonna be using a powered speaker or a PA system, we have an audio out headphone jack that we will send to our mixer to get the audio into our PA system. If you find yourself having to position your projector very low and shoot up at your screen, You'll see a thing called keystoning, where the bottom of your screen is much more narrow than the top. There's a way to fix this. They built the function in called keystoning, and there's two buttons right on top of the projector. You can keystone, and it artificially squares your image. Lastly, when you're done and it's time to turn it off, all these projectors use a really high wattage bulb that gets really hot. So it's important to shut it down properly to not damage the bulb. Just hit your power button and it'll ask, 
are you really sure you want to do this? And you say yes. The fan will run for up to three or four minutes while it cools the bulb down. It's important that you don't unplug it while it cools or you may damage the bulb. And that covers the basics on how to use a projector and a screen. Again, every projector is slightly different, but the things we've gone over in this video should apply to almost every projector. Again, if you have more questions, feel free to call us at the doo shop for one-on-one -on -one support.